Well, what we saw today, I think, definitely, I think everyone would agree, is significantly different than what I've seen on that depth sounder before. Is I specifically remember a valley and then a little hump and then on the hump that looked like a spike going off at a 45 degree angle and then a valley again which to me looked like a mast of a ship head and a small wreck. That to me looked like a wreck. Whoa. And this is significantly different and in a different area of... I was going to say, this a different baby. area. All right, okay. So there may be another wreck down there, or that might be very well some sort of thing that has fallen to at 45 degree angle and it's something else. This is the ocean Does it level. Have a depth on it? Yes, this is 100 meters. This is the ocean level as we're getting close to the reef. And it's very clear that the ocean is flat, 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 flat at about 100 meters. And then there's this sudden rise. This rises at 70 meters. And what we started to be calling the anomaly was this very abrupt rise right here mm. which is at a complete 90 degree angle and this height here to here is 15 to 20 meters tall mm. and so this is a wall 15 to 20 meters tall 30 to 60 feet high right at the break now it almost looks like if you were to say okay uh, you had a fortress up here there's a wall here be, I mean, it doesn't have the outline, the clear outline of, of, right. of a... We've of known a, about a this for two years now, since we've been going to the Viscount Melbourne, and we assumed it to be another wreck. So uh, Can we just go along to those other... Well, other, this, other this you want me... That's coming from another approach, from another angle, and we're getting another dynamic again. We're still getting <laughs> the 100-metre 100, 100 floor level. So there's something there. No, what is it? There's, there's three possibilities. And that there is showing actually to be thicker than what we originally saw because in the first yeah, That's got a lot to do with the speed as you're crossing mask, over yeah. the, the, uh, the uh, okay. anomaly. So this if, if you're going slower, it appears to be a thicker wall. If you're going faster, it, it be, appears to be a, a thinner wall. When we looked further south, by accident, we found some more of this stuff. And uh, that's really... Uh, perked up because that is showing now that may not be a wreck it's okay. uh, something so else here we have no <coughs> no 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 at that point it's 40 mm. I don't, and this yeah. is what this is what's significant about this it's coming up from 96 which is what this level is there that's at 100 this one here is at 90 and then you get this rise to 40 meters now that is that is an object that is something like 40 meters tall even more 50 meters tall and it wasn't, it wasn't um, the movement of the boat, it wasn't external engines in, in no. outboard motors elsewhere because we've gone over it a few times and each time we went over it, it came with the same image. So therefore it is a correct image. This it's is not, very intriguing. not being interfered mm. with. Um, thing, let's wait, have wait, a look wait, at it back, again back, here. Back, yeah, I'm bringing up another stay, one. Wait, stay there, stay there. I just have, I want to talk about, we talked about the idea of a fishing net before and one thing just occurred to me that if this is a wall, and something snagged at the top of the wall that there might be a fishing net attached to the top of the wall but this still could be a wall okay yeah, that but this distance from here to there oh, that's, that's at a least a, that's a huge distance that's a it's nearly 100 meters so we can't use the sonar there because there's the risk of snagging it on such high obstructions is too, too high it's too it's too dangerous Switching it from a different you've got no option but to go out again and oh, we clear up to. the map yeah we can't put the sonar right. out on it well, see see for the sonar to to identify the bottom we'd have to go below that level and we we run the danger of going straight into it and if we do that we lose it it'll just snap off all right, so the next thing to do is to put the Latin longs of all of these, which we've, we've yeah. photographed as we've photographed. Map it all out. This. And then we go down with the ROV. And see if we can. I'd like to actually do more, more mapping. I'd like to actually do some more grid work out there first yes. yeah, yeah, with yeah. this and just see get a clearer more. picture, a larger, even, yeah. a larger area. There could be more area. of these anomalies. There could if, be like a, a lot of structures or buildings. That's the question now. To, the idea that this is... Uh, this can't really be a wreck. So it's down from the three. It could yeah, originally yeah. there could be three three possibilities here. It's a wreck, it's geology, or it's archaeology. Or it's oil and companies I think, dumping ground. 
that's one thing we've got to look at but the magnetometer will fix that we'll run over it with the magnetometer if we get exceptionally high readings we know it's steel from the start yeah. of the track to the end of the track we thought there was something wrong with the magnetometer because we were running it over looking for a wreck thinking it was a wreck and it just went off the full length of the track and we just went that can't be right it's just one and now we understand why that happened because that whole area is, is full of these anomalies. For, for the immediate, for the next move, we've got to get some uh, longer rope. Okay. We're going to have to anchor in 100 meters of water. 70, 70. Well... We anchor on the plane of 70 meters. I don't anchor in the whatever, 100 meters. Whatever, we're going to need at least 200 meters of, of uh, line. Okay. All right, well, I, I can get stuff off my boat yeah. uh, to get out there. Mm. So, because to, to run the ROV, I need to have a steady... Uh, a steady position. I'm not. Otherwise, uh, I'm not risking the, lives on dives. It's going to be no. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, there's too much current out there. It's going to be even marginal. Then. There was zero current out there when I, you guys are so conservative, which is good. But I've dived in Palau. I've dived Peleliu, where there was current. On your own. No, no, not I'm off not. southern side. I know I'm not diving on my the own. But what I'm saying is that there have. was zero current when I went down there diving at this time. There wasn't zero current. I had no, no problem no, 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 whatsoever. No, no. We were, well, the, well, the southern well, sun was, was being blown by the wind. The wind alone was not enough. Okay. Okay, so for you, we've, for, we've observed. For you, what we've got to look at is doing this with a no dive because I don't know whether I would be comfortable enough in doing a dive and you need a buddy. So unless there's someone well, on board who is an experienced diver yeah. that's prepared to dive with you. That kind of depth is dangerous. Th we have to plan this in a no dive situation, how we can assess these anomalies correctly and, um, you know, efficiently without risk, without risk of, 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 of life. I don't, can we trust with you, the you, don't, yes. you don't know how to drive an ROV. No, 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 but no, I, want, I don't Phil, want to go shut down to 100 meters. Shut up for a minute. Don't I've go got to go meters. down to the bottom to reference myself. And then I've got to move to the wall, and then I go back up it again. What if the bottom was 200 meters? Do you have to go down to 200 meters? I can to go to 200 you? meters. Yeah. Why would you? To we, reference we, myself. Why don't you reference it against the 70 meter mark? Because I'll be just going around all over the place trying to pick something up by chance. Which is what we I do. I know where the bottom there. is. The bottom's at 70 meters. The big one. Leave the point. ROV to me, will you? No. Because I'm fighting with you on this because you keep pushing the boat and putting the boat in the wrong position. It's very clear that this boat should be put in the 70 meter live level. Why should we sit in the deep, deep ocean? We should. It's a big, long 70 We're not meter plane. not sitting in the deep, deep ocean. You have to go into the deep to turn around and go back to the shallows. We should stay in the shallows. Boats the do not meters. reverse. You don't go stop and then reverse and go back in. You've got to do a loopy loop. You know we that, you're not, a sailor. We are not doing the loop-de-loop -loop with the boat. We're doing it with the ROV on a stable platform. Floating if you, off, wanna, if you want to pinpoint it. it, you use a dinghy with the depth sounder and you stay stationary. Yes, we can do that. You can do that. Rather than going by is Next shot line the should worst be, possible method. We'll, we'll use yeah. the yeah. And right for that, we need good weather. And, and, drop it. And, yeah. and the weather conditions were not suitable then. I think we did the best we could yeah. under the circumstances. I think we did the best that we could. Okay. And what I and, yeah, it's know, frustrating, the, it's the, frustrating that we couldn't that we solve, the, that we're sitting here now speculating on what this thing is and being on the one side excited that it could be what and we've been looking for we thought it was a wreck and it may be it's archaeology yeah the very reason yeah. we're down here that, that isn't that isn't that and amazing don't, and, and don't we go back to the reason why we think it could be archaeology because this is the edge of the Sunda shelf yes. I mean, we originally went into indonesia requesting permission yeah. to do a survey of the Sunda shelf because we found and we still believe that that is the best location between java and borneo however the the Laconia Shoals is and exactly where we are is on the edge of the shelf. you look at the map, is actually right on the edge, creating the deeper waters of Laconia yeah. as being a bay. Right. And so um, you could say yes, maybe there was a city positioned here, and using that as a port. That so the first thing we've got to do is so, extend our search area there and see if there's more of these anomalies. Yeah. No, no, I disagree because we know this big anomaly here. And if yeah. we waste our time looking for more anomalies during the perfect weather, I know what's going to happen. We're going to have perfect weather to look for more anomalies. We're going to find more stuff. And then the wind comes up, 
the weather gets bad and away we go. And mm -hmm. we have not done any diving. We haven't okay. really investigated so, this one very fully. I, I think that we do just this limited area because this yeah. is something huge. Okay. I mean, if, there, if there's something huge here, yes, I agree, there's other stuff everywhere. We try to examine the ones that we've already found, but if we go out and it's not calm, then we do more research. I agree with we that. We, we, we achieve both. We must do a grid of that area. It would be foolish not to do a grid of that area, and it's foolish not to actually study the anomalies that are there. So we just do both. We just fit it in with the weather. Calm oh. weather, we, we, we make an attempt at okay. finding out exactly what it is. If the wave is chop and the conditions aren't right, then we just steam over it and we just do a grid pattern. We do a grid pattern, we, we map it and we clock it as we drive over it. We map, map it and mark it and we see if we can't get some sort of pattern right. occurring. I want to go through this dive problem again. Um, if we find, and it looks like there's an anomaly as high as 40 meters off the seabed, and we dive to 40 meters all the time, when we get out there and there's 40 meters uh, object, we know exactly is right below us. The se second I step out of the boat, I can go straight down. I have a shot line on it. But how do you know it's direct you directly on it? I mean, I, if I have a I shot mean, line on top of it. But how do you know you've got a shot line on top of it? Well, what do you want to do? Uh, come up what and do you want to no, do diving that the ROV can't do better? Okay, one thing. One thing. The ROV can stay down there for hours. Let me address one thing at an issue. All right, if we do a shot and you can there stay is about, two about minutes. 20... So we've got an ROV, we've got equipment on board that can stay down there for hours and, and do Only if the so perfect conditions are you willing to put the ROV down. You're not in... If, if the boat only is in perfect rolling conditions am I willing to let anybody dive. Yeah, correct. Okay. I'm a safe diver right. and I will dive within my comfort zone. That's and I will not jump off a boat for self-gratification and put anybody at no. risk or, or take and make anybody else responsible for that you dive. see too many accidents. Because I am sensible. Phil, you're not a tech diver. I am not a tech diver. The deepest dives in high stream waters. And water you do have a medical condition. I have a medical condition as if it was just a heart medication that I am on a long-term medication. So that has nothing well, to do so with we're, anything. We're, that's yeah, one of the does. reasons why we're cautious. Does. This is an extreme dive and you've got to be cautious. Well, if it. we are going to waste all this fuel and all our time going out there... Yeah, let's give the ROV a chance. We're filming while we do it. We can record everything directly yeah. onto the computer. All we have to worry about is getting a good day, good weather and a proper anchoring. Uh, what what do you think what you, what, what's your personal hunch on this as to what? Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, I would like it to be a civilization, but um, I've, I've seen nature do some pretty interesting uh, structures by itself. So, um, you, you were saying uh, geology. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it is something, but I think, you know, it's quite possible that it is geology. I think I'm, I'm, I'm with him. There is a possibility that it is archaeology, <laughs> but there, there's a greater uh, chance when you consider all the probabilities that it's uh, more likely to be unusual geology. However, we just got to go in there and, and make... Hope for the best. And, and, and determine one way or the other. That's my opinion. I'm not ruling out the oil companies doing a dump yeah, of some platforms and structures out there that would kind of fit that lot, but I was very pessimistic about us finding a wreck at all out there, and so I'm going to I'm going to stay open-minded. I, I, what? Again, yeah. Which one could, is it? That it could be a civilization, but I think ultimately intuition says it's oil field dump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Ha <laughs> ha.